And now, ladies and gentlemen, this truly is a great pleasure that I get to present to you a man who I first met in Berlin a few years ago. Actually, I think I, like many others, became acquainted with him during his historic journey, July 1969, when he took one small step which transformed into a giant leap for all humankind. It is a singular honor for me to bring before you a true hero of our planet, the first human being to step on the moon, astronaut extraordinaire, Dr. Neil Armstrong, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. This evening is really a hoot for me. I, it reminds me that I am indeed remarkably fortunate. I, I have uh, ridden on 13 different rocket engines and had the privilege of commanding three different types of spacecraft traveling as fast as 25,000 miles an hour. Uh, candidly and unfortunately, all of those were primitive. None of them had warp drive. <laughs> the Enterprise was about 100,000 times as fast as anything I ever flew. Our craft did not even have the ability to leave our solar system. Lucky for those Klingons. <laughs> not having a transporter was a significant disadvantage. The method we used to descend from orbit to the surface of an alien world uh, worked. <laughs> but it would have been far more efficient and far less traumatic if we could just be beamed down. So I'm hoping for my next command to be given a Federation starship. <laughs> and when I get that command, I would like to have a crew like Captain James T. Kirk had. Spock and Chekhov and Uhuru and Dr. McCoy and Zulu and the others we all remember. Now, I have a confession to make. I am an engineer. And if I get that command, I want a chief engineering officer like Montgomery Scott.
because I know Scotty will get the job done and do it right. Even if I often hear him say, but Captain, I didn't have enough time. So for one, from one old engineer to another, thanks, Scotty. <laughs> Ms. Nichelle Nichols and Mr. Neil Armstrong! If we do not act immediately, our life as we know it, perhaps the very existence of the Federation will end. Starfleet will not be able to assist us in this matter. Oh. There is something not quite right within Starfleet. Then we must find the other means. You must assemble a new crew. Quietly. They will be hunted as outcasts and criminals. Yet, they may well be our last chance.